Hey, Joe Gilder here. Recently, I did this video on two frequencies to check for better vocals, and then we got this question from... There you are. Wizbeatbang8264, can you do one about instrument EQ frequencies? You got it. So, the premise is every instrument, of course, is going to be different. Every bass track is going to be different from every other bass track to a degree. But there are certain commonalities, certain frequencies I find myself gravitated towards on different types of instruments. Big picture, low mid-range is gonna be a problem on most anything you record. Why? Because that's where the fundamental frequency is of most things. My voice, a guitar, a piano, all those fundamental notes the stuff that feels warm to our ears lives in the low mid-range, which is, I'd say, 100 hertz up to 300, right around there. Down below that is the low end, the bass frequencies, the sub-frequencies. Those are obviously important, too. Low frequencies in general have a lot of energy. That's just good to know. The low frequencies are going to be higher than the high frequencies in general just by the nature of how things work. But... The low mid-range is a place I'm, I'm going to look on most things that I work on. So let me give you some specific examples. We'll start with drums. All right, here's a drum kit that I recorded literally a few weeks ago in this room. These are the raw tracks with no plugins on them. Here's what they sound like. Sounds an awful lot like a drum kit. Let's throw Pro EQ on here. I've set this up with Control 1, which adds Pro EQ to whatever is selected, which is my drum bus. I've got a video on that. Go check that out if, you've, if, you, if that just made you really excited just now. Uh, but Pro EQ is on my overall drum bus. So my first order of business with drums every time is to get rid of the boxiness, which is right around 400 hertz. I have very few rules that I always do with EQing. It's typically more dependent on whatever's happening in the moment, but this is one you can hang your hat on. 400 hertz or thereabouts sounds boxy always. I'm going to grab this mid-range band. It's, it's more of a low mid feel, but let me just show you what that sounds like. It's just kind of that you can hear it, this like the sound of wind, low sound of wind. If you pull that down, your brain perceives, now that that's out of the way, you can hear that deep kick drum and the snappy snare and cymbals better. It's as if you boosted the other two, but you did it with one move instead of two. People ask me this all the time, Joe, you're all about subtractive EQ. If I cut the mids, isn't that exactly the same as boosting the lows and the highs? Sure, in theory, and if you like doing twice the work, I say go for it. But for me, I'd rather just do it in one move when when it works. So uh, here's what that sounds like. I mean, it it never it it literally never gets old. I've been doing this for decades. <laughs> <laughs> that that EQ move still makes me excited, still makes me happy. Um, let me turn it on and off just so you can hear it. For whatever reason, there are a lot of things happening around 400 hertz in the cymbals, in the drums when they're resonating, and just it it all it all sounds gross and you pull it down and instantly the drums sound better. Now from here, depending on how the drums sound, I will potentially take a look at boosting around 50 to 80 hertz if I want the kick drum to come out more. I don't think I want to here, but I'll let you hear what that sounds like. I used a sub kick on this, which is one of those kind of speakers in reverse, so I got plenty of low end here. So I don't think I need to boost that low end, but that's one frequency spot that I will definitely look. And then the other spot is in the three to five K range on drums. That's where a lot of the of the kick and the snare, the snare mainly, but also the 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 tappiness that of the kick drum lives up around 
3K. It can be as low as 1K, but I feel like 3 to 5K is really where some of the snap and the detail comes in. Let me show you. If I take, let's make this nice and wide. If I take around 3 to 5K and I pull it down, listen to how all the clarity leaves the drums. Still have the top end, like the ride cymbal. You heard that, but a lot of the snappiness of this kick and snare is gone. And if we boost this, that snappiness comes out. Let me adjust this a little bit. By the way, you can adjust the width here by scrolling on your mouse, which is kind of neat. You can also adjust it here on that Q control. Let's boost it now. So it's just a little frequency range that sometimes is nice. And obviously you can boost higher, lower. All the frequencies are in play. Those are the three that I tend to be gravita gravitated towards mostly on drums. Now let's move on to bass. You're going to notice a theme here as we continue. On bass, here's the bass part for that same song. He used some octave, some drive, so it is not a clean bass by any stretch of the imagination. But here's what it sounds like. There's, there's not much, honestly, that I want to do to this bass, but for a, if you tend to record really clean, aka boring, bass, um, the, the spots where you want to pay attention to are, again, the low mids, but this time it's more around 120. Something about 120 on bass. It tends to be the loudest part of the recorded bass, but it covers up the deep, real low end. So 20 is double 60. I'm sorry, 120 is double 60. What does that mean in frequency terms? That means 60 is an octave lower than 120. So 120 tends to be the dominant kind of frequency on a bass recording. I don't know if it has to do with the way the fingers, I don't know, I don't know the math behind it, but that's just the fact. And so if you let 120 be the loudest frequency on the bass, your bass will always sound kind of woo 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 instead of do 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 do. It's like kind of like tenor versus bass in a choir. If the tenors are too loud, you don't get to hear the bass and all the cool notes they're singing. So if that's the case, I like to come in here to 120 and with a fairly narrow EQ and pull that down. Here's what that frequency sounds like boosted. It's low, but it's not low, low. So pulling that down, it allows that lower sub-frequency to come through. This isn't a great example. Hold on, I'm going to find a better example. Here's a bass part I recorded for a different, more ballad-type song. And this is literally the EQ curve that I put on this bass. What do you know? I cut it at... It was more like 150 over 120, so the specific number doesn't matter as much as finding that spot. But that section sounds like this. Way higher than you think it should. That's the dominant sound. And so if I cut it nice and low, the low bow comes through a little bit better. Other things on bass, same with kick drum. I may boost down at 50 to 80 if it needs a little more help with the sub bass. And then the attack of the actual sound of the pick on the strings, finger on the strings, a little bit of the fret sound. If I need a little more of that, or if there's some grit from the amp and I want to boost that, similar to with the drums, I'll come up here to 1 to 5K, somewhere in that upper mid-range, find that spot and boost it. Here's what that sounds like. On this one, it's probably closer to like 1,500 or so. Doesn't I don't think it necessarily needs it. Not every song needs it. But sometimes when you want that bass to cut through, a little boost in those upper frequencies will get the job done. Let's talk guitar, specifically acoustic guitar. It's kind of the same thing. The low mid-range can be a jerk. Here's some acoustics. Decent recording. I like the recording, but it's still a little too prominent down in this low mid-range. Now it's going to sit better. It's not going to fill up the low end and mess with the bass and other things, which is kind of delightful. Um, it also, acoustic guitars can sometimes, especially with a thinner pick, which is what I played here, they can sound a little plasticky, a little fake, and that can be around 1K-ish. Let's go find it. <laughs> it 
It's kind of the sound sometimes when you plug your guitar in, that kind of plinky, planky sound. I just don't like it. So I'll usually come into somewhere in this mid range and pull some of that down if I'm hearing it. Gives it a little bit of a scooped sound. The mid range is scooped out a little bit. So now we hear the kind of the bright, picky sounds and then the low end. Now you can boost the highs too if you want it to be real, real like sparkly in the mix. Be careful. Nine times out of 10, that boost is a bad idea because you maybe are hearing it and it makes you happy and excited, but it's actually too much. Or maybe you don't have as good of a hearing in the higher frequencies as you used to, and you start boosting a lot of high frequencies that sound good to you, but then you send it out into the world and people with a little bit better hearing than you, their ears start to bleed because you've added so much high frequency. So be careful with the high frequency boost. Electric guitars in the same ballpark as acoustic, same basic frequency problems. Again, the low mids might be a problem, so let's pull those down. And then, de depending if it's a really aggressive thing with a lot of, if it's really like overdriven, those upper mids are going to be loud, so those may need to be pulled or boosted around 3K. Um, for something like this, when it's cleaner, I find myself in this 5 to 800 range, sometimes cutting to make it not sound so wah, 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 similar to what we did on the drums. That gives it a little more clarity, a little less, it sounds like cloudiness to me in the mid-range. Um, now granted, that's across all the guitars and there's a lot of ambience there, so that makes sense. And finally, what about piano, or in this instance, big thick keyboard like this is like a fender Rhodes sort of sound i think it's the suitcase version so it's a little chimier in the top end glorious by itself as soon as you add anything else things start to get muddy real fast so eq wise i typically get pretty aggressive with this as much as i like the warmth i don't need all that low end so a lot of times there's a high pass filter first And then there's usually something around 200 hertz to pull down that thickness even more. So you kind of want to give the impression of all that low end without actually having it there. If you have all that low end there, as soon as you add another instrument, things get out of hand pretty quickly. So on a, on a piano, it's a similar thing, maybe not quite as aggressive, but the same idea applies. Those low mids are where a lot of things build up. So let's even things out a little bit. And then we can check and see the mid range and the high end as well. But that low mid, if you spend a lot of your time focused on getting the low mid right, everything else will start to fall into place. All right, that's it for today. Did I skip over lots of different instruments? You betcha I did, but this should be enough to get you started. Thanks for watching.